Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sounds Like a Drum. This week we're talking about, of course, some more experimental stuff, and that's getting into flipping your snare drum over and playing on the snare side. So if you've watched all of our episodes to date, you probably know that most of the time when I'm hosting it means we're going to be diving into something a little less standard, more experimental, kind of out there stuff. And this week is certainly no exception. Uh, but first, I want to thank our presenting sponsor, Promark by Diderio, for helping make all of this possible. So you may have seen certain drummers out there experiment with playing on the snare side of their snare drum so that the snare wires are exposed and you can actually play on them. You can you know, brush your stick across them, making all sorts of interesting sounds, and you get a lot of snare response. Now, in terms of the sound that I was going for here, definitely a mixture of like some hip hop sounds, kind of a drum and bass sound, but a lot of it harkening back to more of a, a marching snare drum sound or really pipe band snare drums. If you've ever looked into the world of Scottish pipe band, uh, it's a whole different beast. And the drums are designed really interestingly because they have typically two sets of snare wires. There's snare wires on the bottom, just like a standard snare drum, but then there's also snare wires right below the batter head. And so this is kind of the approach I was going for. And of course, I don't have a special snare drum for this. I'm just using a regular drum set snare. So I went ahead and flipped the drum upside down. I've got the snare wires completely exposed. And of course, this does present some challenges because it's interrupting your playing zone. When I'm playing, I'm not playing dead center on this thing unless I really want to destroy my snare wires. Most of the time, I'm playing on those outer edges of either the opposite side or close to me. Thinking back to where I probably first saw this, I want to say Hip Pickles was probably the first one that came to mind. Most recently, our friend Brody Simpson has been experimenting with some of this, and we actually had a little chat with him about this process and experimenting and figuring out what was the best setup for him to use and what we've been using. Um, but he's got some videos on his Instagram that we'll link below so you can hear kind of what it can sound like once you've processed it and really experimented with it. So before we get too much further into this, let's listen to what it sounds like right now now. The snare batter head is cranked up there. And one thing I haven't mentioned at all yet is that there isn't a drum head on the bottom side. For the performance demonstration stuff today, we've added on a Shure SM57 pointed at the snare wires because we want to capture a little bit more of that direct sound. Now, you can experiment with this till your heart's content when it comes to post-production. There are a lot of fun things that you could do with EQ, uh, compression, especially adding in like other effects. You know, you could distort it a little bit. There's just a multitude of things you can do. And of course, if you want to just like crush the entire thing with compression, like crush your overall drum sound, you can get some really interesting sounds, particularly for like house beats and things like that. So let's hear what this thing sounds like. So before you go ahead and end the video and just grab your snare drum, flip it over and start playing on it and ruin a perfectly good snare side head, there are some important things that you should know about the setup on this. For the last couple of months, I've been experimenting with this sound a little bit, trying to figure out what the best setup was, the right drum head, the right snare wires, uh, even experimenting with different drums and trying to figure out what made the most sense to get this particular sound. In this case, we're using my standard Pearl Masters Custom Extra Maple 
uh, five and a half by 14 inch snare drum. It's a relatively simple standard maple snare drum. And this drum has a pretty standard snare bed in it. There's a, a decent recognizable dip there in the bearing edge. And that's something important to keep in mind because if you go with a really thick drum head, if you're looking for something that's ultra durable, something that's a little bit more rigid, you might have a little bit more difficulty getting it to conform around that snare bed. And that's one of the key reasons why thin heads like two mil and three mil drum heads are used typically on the snare side. It's because they can easily conform to that snare bed and respond very easily, uh, thus triggering the sound of the snare wires. In our case, we need a drum head that's going to be durable enough to withstand actually playing on, but at the same time able to conform around the bearing edge and specifically that snare bed and still responsive to the snare wires themselves. After trying out a lot of different things, it seemed like just a standard 10 mil G1 was the way to go. I tried some thicker heads, I tried some thinner heads, I put some dents in some heads, and really it just seemed like this was the best way to go. It's the easiest to tune. It was able to conform to the bearing edge really nicely. When it came to tuning this up, I did employ the ruler method that we've covered in previous videos, really because I wanted to make sure that I was getting the contour to match that of the snare bed of this drum. I did have to absolutely crank the batter head here. This thing is reefed. I have taken it like into the stratosphere and I let it sit for a little while when I first put it on there because I did want it to mold to that snare bed. That That's the most challenging aspect. You've got a 10 mil drum head versus a standard three mil drum head trying to wrap itself around that dip in the bearing edge. As far as snare wires go, I ended up just using the Custom Pro 24 strand steel wires that were on here from Pure Sound. And these are gonna take a beating. You know, you're gonna hit the wires. If you're experimenting with brushing the stick across them, if you're actually playing on them, if you're doing rim knocks, things like that, you are going to damage the snare wires. That's just kind of an inherent element of this. But you can get some really interesting sounds along the way. And I found that you don't have to have perfect snare wires by any means for this. You could get away with probably just about anything. I happen to like that these have the quick release system with the cotter pin, so it's just easy to swap them out and experiment with different things. But this is a great way to utilize snare wires that may be pretty beat up. Like these wires, I normally wouldn't have put on a regular drum because um, they already had some kinks in them and things like that. But you can get away with this stuff a little bit more when you've got it on the top side. I found that 20 and 24 strand wires seem to really work nicely. Uh, the 24s provide a little bit of extra buzz that at least for where my ear is at right now, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I don't think I would go with anything wider than that. Certainly not the 30s and by no means would I imagine getting into 42 strand wires. Part of this has to do with the fact that you start to severely limit the real estate that you have available to play on, on the drum, once you've got more width covered by snare wires. I also just don't think I needed more snare sound. I was already getting a lot of response simply because I'm playing inches away, if not less, from the wires themselves, and they're, they're activated quite immediately. As you're dialing this in, start out with the snare wires incredibly loose. You want it so that you can pretty much just pick the mechanism up and not have any tension on there. Then slowly start to dial those in to taste based on the kind of stuff that you're playing. I found that I was going back and forth between uh, a pretty light tension to literally no tension at all, particularly when I'm doing rim knocks and I'm looking for just a little additional snare sound built in there. I made the conscious decision to pivot the snare drum around a little bit so that the snare bed is running almost perpendicular to me, but at the same time, I wanted to be able to brush my stick across them for certain grooves where you know, I'm emulating some sort of like a, a DJ scratching a record, that kind of a sound, but with the stick across the snare wires and not have to like change the angle in a really awkward way. If you're going to experiment with brushing the stick across the snare wires themselves, I definitely recommend flipping the stick around and using the back end versus the tip. The tip is probably just gonna get caught up in the wires and you're more likely to just damage them faster. Whereas if you're using the back end, there's a little bit more surface area there and it's gonna kind of play across the top of the wires, getting you the sound that you're 
probably looking for. But experiment and figure out what works best for you. So what are the cons to this setup? What's wrong with doing this? Well, chances are you're not going to hurt your drum. And I know that that's something that's probably gonna come up in the comments. I wanna nip that in the bud right now. You're not going to wreck your drum in any way by doing this as long as you're using common sense. You will likely damage your snare wires, and that's just one of the reasons why I recommend using a, a used set of wires, maybe a set of wires that you were about to throw out because they've got some kinks in them, things like that. You can try it out on those first, and you can really destroy them if you feel like it. You don't have to worry about babying them at all. As far as the drum head's concerned, I found that this 10 mil G1 did just fine. I'm not playing very hard at all, and that's just because of kind of the nature of this music. Definitely something to be careful with here is that if you're going the same route that I did, which involves not using a snare side head, then you're going to want to be really careful about placing the drum in the snare basket. You should dial that in appropriately so that the shell is not sitting on metal or anything like that. Another thing you could do is use a mesh drum head and then that'll allow you to use all your normal hardware. You'll have your hoops on there. You'll protect the bearing edge. Everything will be fine and you'll get a similar sound because the air is easily passing through that bottom side. But please do be careful with your drum when you're doing this in terms of setting it down or like I don't know, whatever you do with your snare drum, you wanna make sure that you are babying it to a certain degree if you're moving it around, especially if you decide to leave the hoop off and put this in a case or something like that, please be careful because the edge is more susceptible to damage, obviously, when there is no hoop on there. Another challenge that I ran into, and I actually first discovered this while I was starting to film today's episode, was that because you have the snare wires on the top, Gravity is holding them against the head all the time, pretty much. So when I'm talking, if I don't have anything between the wires and the head, the wires are going to rattle. And so that may be an issue in certain circumstances you find yourself in. But I feel like usually if you're doing this kind of thing, you're probably not playing like the singer songwriter gig that's going to have, you know, an acoustic guitar intro that you need to be nice and quiet for in the beginning. But if that is the case, you can just take a piece of cloth and put it right underneath. That's what I've done right now, just to be able to keep those wires from rattling while I'm talking. So to sum up, this is a really interesting thing to do if you're looking for a fun experiment, especially if you have a spare snare drum that you can dedicate to this kind of thing for a period of time. I found that it inspired me to play some new things. It made me listen to my playing in a different way. And it just got me thinking a little bit more about that relationship of tension on the snare wires versus the snare side head, or in this case, the batter head and how it all plays together. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Diderio. And if you enjoyed this video, please do leave us a comment below, like it, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and tap that little bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you always get a notification when we release new videos. Thanks so much, we'll see you next time.